all of a sudden, whoosh, I'm in Alaska. I like it. So, so praise, I'm sorry, I was, oh, um, bless you, let's, thank you, I think you mentioned cake, thank you for that, let us stand up, no, no, we're going to do the service, but thank you so much, that is so sweet of you and Todd, birthday boy, he's something else, my own personal parrot, how could I forget him? David Chaddock. The name says it all. Chat Dak. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Patrick, we love you. Great job, Sunday. Let's give it up to the Lord. Give it up. For Pastor Patrick, he did such a great job, Sunday. I was so excited about that message. We're going to have a powerhouse night um, tonight. And uh, there's a message that God has really, really put in my heart. And um, I remember uh, a few months ago. I did uh, a message, could have, would have, if I would have done it this way, if I would have done it that way, if only this, if only that, right? How many remember the message? Okay. So it's, it's actually living that moment still years and years later of what you could have been, who you could have been with, what you could have done, where you could have been by now, all these just crazy, crazy thoughts. We are exactly where God wants us to be. Yeah. And I'm just learning that. Reading the Bible, I'm learning more and more that it's, it's dangerous to actually live in our past. I'm not going to give it away. Bow your heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the crowd that we have here. And it's 730. Lord, people that desire to be here, people that want to put you first. Father, I pray for all those that, that not only that they're here, but that they stay throughout the night. I know we have one or two people that that go out or three or four that go out and don't hear the entirety of the message for whatever reason. God, you know what it what that reason is. You know what what uh, they know what that reason is. But Lord, I just pray right now that we don't let our left, right, top, bottom, whoever's around us uh, interrupt intercept your message that you have for us tonight. Bless us. Favor us. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Give God a mighty hand one more time. Yeah. So give the worship team a mighty hand right now. Amen. And by the way, by the way, by the way, this is coming out of my heart. Not, this is not my daughter. This is me. Uh, I'm not a praise and worship leader, but I've been doing church for 23 years, and I'm excited about doing new songs. How many like, love new songs? I love new songs. How many love the old songs? It's okay. The hymns. What I mean by new is it could be an old song, but new, new to us, that we're doing new. I should have said that. So I, I, that's been in my heart. I've been after my daughter. I've actually been after Jury and everybody else that I want new songs. New. It doesn't mean 2020 songs it means different songs and i thank the lord that god put in my daughter's heart and hawk to help me and jury and everybody else that's why um k is here also uh god put in my heart we we want to bring worship to the house you know there's a difference i'm gonna cap it off with this pastor patrick and i both know there's a difference between fast songs praise songs, and then worship songs. Just to teach you a little bit about order, usually, not all the time, not religiously, usually a pastor will come in when he's coming in to preach at the time of a worship song. Todd, you're the best uh, model I have here, probably besides Pastor Patrick and Chino for this because they've been in church the longest, probably Tom also. So a worship song is what I love to enter into because worship already paves the ground. If you get your worship on, woo, you are paving the ground for God to drop a gem in your spirit. Somebody praise the Lord one more time. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a mighty hand. Amen. You know, somebody just screamed out solo. You're not going to believe this, Pastor Patrick. 
I told my daughter to get me ready because I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start singing some songs. I don't have a shabby voice. My voice is still decent. I can hold the note, especially if I know the song. But I told my daughter I could see me, her, uh, my other daughter, maybe a few others leading in worship. There's some songs that I want to bring to you. The songs that, some of the songs that she played today are songs that I pull over in my car. I pull over in my car and I start to worship God. This is on my way to work sometimes, coming from work, because I need Jesus. I need, I don't know about you, but I need Jesus. How many need the Lord here tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as always, I'm going to bring my little homily to you about giving. And always remember, there are some of you that you just come up and you just give because you can't wait to give. And it's a blessing. That's how I feel when I come to church on a Sunday. I, I, the first thing I do is go through the doors, grab an envelope, and I want to give. You know why? Nothing belongs to me. Nothing belongs to me. My children are a gift from the Lord. And I have seven, six daughters and a son. The animals that we have at home, place where we live, my father-in-law. You know, all this belongs to the Lord. Who, who am I then? I'm just a steward. I'm a steward that God wants to see what I'll do and how I'll manage what belongs to him. When you take care of what belongs to someone else, God will bless you with more. What you do with a little, God will see, and he'll give you more. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to talk to you about poverty, poverty and prosperity. And look at your neighbor and say, it's a choice. So I believe that there are times that God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. Some of you have given up even on receiving your blessing. That's sick. That's so sick. But I believe, and I have seen and spoken to some, that they, they're no longer even expecting blessings to come to them. They've given up. So I believe that God's desire is to bless you more than you want to get blessed yourself. So the first, I want to teach you three quick principles. God promises, somebody say promises. God promises to meet the needs of consistent givers. If you don't have a job, if you don't have finances, but you're here, you're still going to get blessed. You, did you hear what I said? If you don't have finances and you're here, you're still going to get blessed. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 declares, And my God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The second principle I want you to to hear tonight is God promises that you'll have more than enough. More than enough. Who does he promise that to? To obedient givers. I give because I love God, not because of what he does for me. He already did everything on the cross. I give because of who he is. I give because I'm being obedient to what the word says. You know, the word says in the book of Malachi, you, you rob me of what? Tithes and offerings. You rob me. Huh? God, I'm robbing you? If you have an income, I don't care what church you go to, what ministry you attend, I thank God that you're here. I am grateful that you're here. It's by God's grace that you're here. I could be preaching to the walls, and I would. I'm crazy like that. I am. I really am crazy like that. But I want to say, Chino could tell you that. Chino could vouch for that. But I want to say to you that when God puts seed in your hand and you don't you don't sow, he's not going to he's not going to put more seed in your hand. What he's going to do is the Bible says he's going to put holes in in your bags, meaning in your pockets, in your bank account, in your savings, in your checkings, and he says he's going to blow them away. He says, "No, don't blame Satan for it. It's I that am doing that." Because God wants to put seed. How many believe that God wants to put seed in your hand? 
Because he wants to bless you. He wants you to sow seed so he can bless you. So how many believe that tonight? Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. The third principle and in closing that I want to share with you is that God promises a good life for his obeying children. A good life. I don't know where you're at tonight. I don't know where you're at tonight. Do you feel like you've lived as of as afar? Do you feel like you've lived a good life? Think about it. Take a self-inventory. Do you feel like you've lived a good life up to now, up to date? Let me read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. I believe I don't care what country you're from. I don't care if it's a third world country. but all God's children. You could be in the Philippines. You could be in, I, I don't care, in Africa somewhere. You could be in Puerto Rico. I don't care where you're at. But because you're a believer and you're a child of God, you will eat the best of the land. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Powerful. See, God has the best job for you. He has the best employer for you. He has the best supervisor for you. He has the best employees if you own a company. And for those that own property, he has the best tenants for you too. See, I believe that God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. Let us bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just declare your word to be yes and amen. Father, we hold not on to just uh, words and people that are eloquent in, in, in verbiage and in speaking. Father, we don't hold on to false promises. We hold on to your word, to your promises. Father, bless your children. Put seed in their hand. Give them the desire to sow that seed that they may be blessed in such a way that they'll be able to bless others also. In such a way that for a thousand generations to come, their seed, their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, thousand years to come, a thousand generations to come, that they shall be blessed. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Give God a mighty hand, everybody. Would you give Ben a great big hand? Would you give Ben a great big hand? Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, would you play a song for me? There's a tambourinist here who played last time. I just saw him. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Saw you digging in the backyard Saw you plowing the earth You were looking for the footprints Of God of this earth I saw you burying your treasure I saw you hiding your gold You were concealing your treasure Where moth and rust will destroy Your eyes have not seen the sun since the day the earth stood still Did you lose your way somewhere between here and resurrection bill? I've been studying the stars 
I've been listening for that still small voice. It's like a fire in the dark. I've been swerving the eternal. I've been living in the now. Life is a mortarboard, yeah, but heaven is a crown. I have not seen the sun since the day the earth stood still. Did you lose your way somewhere between here and Resurrectionville? That day upon that hill I got my head out the window Between here and Resurrectionville Test. They're perfect, beautiful. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Yay! Okay. Praise the Lord. Burn 
bright, bright and, and clear. Replace the lamp of my first love that's filled with holy fear. I want to take your word and shine it all around, but please make the stress with it, Lord. And if I'm doing good, help me to not make a sound except to give you all the glory. It's been a while since I've been up here. I think we used to have civil rights back then. Sorry, it's a joke about the pandemic. Okay. We all have a good pandemic joke. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Okay. I want to thank Jesus, who is my leader and my savior. I want to thank Pastor Patrick, Pastor Wilfredo, and uh, Barnabas Maua for inviting me up here. He's working on a nickname for me, but I'm, I'm just better with nicknames. It's okay. That's what I have instead of a personality. When you hear voices. Now I want, I'm going to assume that this is a majority. The people here have heard little thoughts in their head. They weren't quite sure where they came from. I'm going to say this is the right crowd for that message. There's three kind of geographical areas that the Word of God says they come from. Above, below, and, you know, this whole area right here. And above here is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, angels. And here is our own thoughts and feelings and will and the Holy Spirit. And below is, is the devil and demons, and all of which... It's possible for us to hear things from. Now, the first test I want to give us in the Word of God, if you have heard something, and weren't quite sure where it was, where it came from, like if it's your thought, God's thought, uh, the enemy's thought. 1 Corinthians 12.3 says, No man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So there is a basic test where if you feel like something is talking to you, say, say Jesus is Lord. And no demon can say, nobody can say that except by the Holy Spirit. And so the devil, should the devil be talking to you, cannot say that to you. A demon, should a demon be talking to you, cannot say that to you. Okay? The Word of God says so. If it cannot say that back to you, it is a demon or the enemy himself. And James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee. 
Now, it is possible that angels do speak to people, but we have a misunderstanding about angels. When people tell long stories about visitations and conversations, I think that there is a deliberate red flag there. Angels are warriors, worshipers, and messengers. They're not interested in you socially. They're interested in being in the presence of God and carrying out tasks for God. So the, the, the messages delivered by angels, for the most part in the Word of God, are very short, very specific, very targeted. Uh, just like the person that came to deliver a package to your house didn't stop and have lunch with you. He has a number of things to do that are more important. If it can say Jesus is Lord, it is you or an angel or the Holy Spirit. If it is you, your thoughts, acknowledge that it is your thoughts and ask God for help. If it is a bad thought. Now, if it is God, now truly, I believe God speaks to believers in a variety of ways, but he does speak. Sometimes it's an auditory voice you can hear. Sometimes it is circumstance. Sometimes it is a, a pressure on your conscience. Yes. What do we do when we're confident God has spoken to us? First thing, there's, i got three basic actions. One is act. Another one is speak. The other one is don't speak. Act. What is a good son or daughter? You have in your mind an idea of a good son or daughter. Those of you that are parents. You, you kind of think, you know, the, the good one's like this, the bad one's like this. I submit to you that a good son or daughter is an obedient son or daughter. Jonah was obedient until he wasn't. Otherwise, why would God have treated him like a prophet until he stopped behaving like one? Matthew 10, 8 says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. God has used me and other people to cast out devils and heal the sick, not because I am talented, but because I'm obedient, because I've become and been made obedient. Two, speak. Matthew 10, 27 says, what I tell you in the dark, that speak in the light, that which you hear in the ear, preach ye upon the housetops. So sometimes God is gonna put something on your conscience, either by highlighting the word or speaking something in your ear, that you're gonna be responsible to speak forth. The third one is the most interesting, I think. I've got three examples related to a response to God speaking being, don't speak. Joseph had a dream. He was naive enough to think his brothers would be glad to hear about it. And how glad were they? Imprisonment glad. We're so happy you're going to be in authority over us. We're going, to, we're going to put you in a pit and sell you to our enemies. So in retrospect, he was naive. Maybe his story, now God used his naivete, but sometimes we're supposed to keep these things to ourselves. Paul said he had a vision of a third heaven. Things he's seen that are not lawful to speak about. Things that are so good that we're not allowed in on it. That he's seen that he's not allowed to share. Now, I don't know the reason, but I know that that which we see is not faith anymore. Now, the most interesting person, now in a sense, though, I mean, Joseph, we think maybe could have kept it to himself. Paul definitely is. Here is a, a trait of a heroic person of the faith that I think is not talked about in the, about this particular noble characteristic. Mary was a pregnant woman that didn't talk about her baby. Think about that. She's a highly unusual character. Women love their babies. Women love being pregnant. They love talking about it with their friends. True? No, women hate talking about babies, right? They hate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but Mary, she knew she was pregnant of God, and she just kept it to herself. So, could it have been that she would have provoked people to jealousy the same way that Joseph provoked people to jealousy? Jo Joseph was naively thought it was going to go great. 
when he said, bros, I'm, God's going to do these great things for me and I'm going to be the leader. And he misjudged the character of his older brothers. Mary, though, understood that this was some secret that God had given her. And that sometimes the response to hearing something from God is to keep it inside. Sometimes it is to act. Sometimes it is to speak. Sometimes it is to keep it to yourself. I learned something in the past couple years by someone who goes to this church. I used to think if somebody asked you a question, you had to answer. But this particular brother taught me that sometimes the right answer is to say nothing. And I was really confused. And yet I thought, wait a minute. He's learned from what Joseph said. He's learned from Mary, that sly brother. Okay, so when you hear voices, we test with the word of God to see if it is God himself, see if it is our own thoughts, see if it is the enemy. If it is God, we act or we speak or sometimes we say nothing. Thank you and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's give it up. Amen. Keep my microphone just like this. Praise God. You know, I want to share a word with you tonight that, of course, I, I preach to myself constantly. You, you, you won't believe what I'm about to tell you. And maybe you will. Maybe you go through the same thing. But just like I taught about the could have, would have, if only... You know, and I told you how demonic that could be because you and I are exactly where God wants us to be. But though I, I, if there's something that I fight, that's one of the biggest things that I fight is not so much addiction. It's, it's the thought of, if only, right? And I preach, I believe I preach a, a Hall of Fame or a great sermon, so I think on that message. As a matter of fact, if you remember, I was crying when I preached it because it's the life that for some reason I, I dwell on. And I want you to understand that at times, so many times, we have heard, man, forget your past. Girl, forget your past. Man, just move forward, man. Forget about that. It's forget it. Forget about that. And it's forget, forget, forget. And I want to share a truth. And some of you may look at me like I'm really, really crazy today. And I am. If you're watching, somebody praise the Lord. Amen. I want to use for a subject tonight, it's time to release your failures. Let me say that one more time. It is time, the time is now, to release your failures. A lot of times, somebody say amen, somebody praise the Lord, amen. There's a lot of times that not only do we not forget our past, and I believe there's reason why, but there's times that we don't release in our lives all the times that we failed doing something. And we are taught by some great positive people that your, your failures are what steps you into your future. Your failures are the stepping stone to your success. Somebody praise the Lord. And I, and, and Manuel, I believe that. I believe that. But I want to go a little deeper tonight because I look at my life. I'm 56. You know, a few weeks ago I turned 56 by the grace of Almighty God. Somebody praise the Lord. And I look at my life and I'm going to be honest with you because I'm being honest with my Jesus. I still, I got some people nodding right now. I still recollect and bring to remembrance, or it comes to remembrance, my failures. 
And I say to myself, wow, that happened when I was 12. Man, that, that happened when I was 15. Man, that happened when I was 28. Man, that happened when I was 33. So I want to read from Scripture. Oh, I got Eric's attention. I want to read from Scripture, Hawk. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. You're not going to believe this. Not that I have already attained or am already perf perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Wow. Brothers and sisters, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, to make it on my own. But one thing I do, forgetting, listen to the word, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Somebody praise the Lord right there. Amen. It says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's why I do it. But then it goes to chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. I can see the apostle Paul. Finally, my brothers and sisters, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things, what things, what things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and God of peace will be with you. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that when we dwell in our past, when we look at our failures, though we have people that are so positive, I believe God puts positive people in our life, and I believe that we want to learn the terms and the, the terminology and the verbiage and all the positive things and we read them and we see them and even the Bible gives them to you and we get all, oh, we want to hang up the picture, we want to put it on our car. Come on, am I the only one? Somebody praise the Lord. Many of us do that. Positive affirmation. Come on now. But I want to say to you that I want to go back to Philippians 3, verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not count myself to have apprehended. The word apprehended there means to enable. Means to open up. Means to achieve. He says, I, I, don't, I don't see that I've done this myself. I know it wasn't because of me. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead. I want to share with you tonight that the word forgetting there does not mean get rid of. The word forgetting does not mean you cut off your past. It is only because of our past that we recognize where we're at in the present to know where we go into the future. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for our past. If it weren't for our past, we wouldn't have the Old Testament. Your past will bring you to your present, but your past and your present together will bring you into your future. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I want to go back to the word forgetting. The word forgetting does not mean to cut off of remembrance. The word forgetting means to release. Mm, I'm going somewhere tonight. I just want to read some meanings for you tonight. If you are watching, 
The word release or in this verse, forgetting. Forgetting meaning release, releasing. It means to allow or enable to escape from confinement. To be set free. Hallelujah. It says to be liberated. To be let out. To allow to leave. To allow something to move. To allow the action of or the flow of, but to do it freely. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe that the only way that we can forget or release our past is by allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to step us into our future. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is only through the power of the Holy Spirit that you can release or forget your past. If God was to say, if I were to ask God, God, why do you not rid of all of our past? God would say, it is your past. That's your testimony. And your testimony, which has to do with your past, will step another brother or sister into their future. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh. Your testimony is said in past. It is very rare that you get a testimony that is in present. And then you get a prophecy, a testimonial prophecy. Woo! That if you keep speaking it, it will manifest. It will be put in motion. I'm here to tell you that God is saying forget those things because you need to release it because I'm about to break something loose in your life and it's about to move and it's about to go in motion and that which God puts in motion, the devil cannot stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I got the God bums because the goose don't get the credit. I want to say to you that when God delivered me, when he freed me, when he released me of the things I was doing in the past, if today is today, tomorrow is still your past. Tomorrow is not your present. Sorry, yesterday is not your present. It is your past. Whatever happened yesterday, leave it in yesterday. Today, you're stepping into your future. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But what happens is just like addiction. There are people that think of their past so much that they dwell. Somebody say dwell. They dwell on their past. And they speak of their past so much that their past being spoken of sets itself in motion. Anything that you speak a lot about will be set in in motion whatever you speak will come to life and if you give life to your past it will come and it will develop and it will manifest and it will start to go in motion that's why i believe that people relapse they live in their past they stay in their past they don't release their past and they speak of their addiction so much that there's a manifestation Whew. Your words will put something in your life, whether it's negative or positive, in motion. I believe that it's time to release our past. Release it. In other words, let go of it. And only allow through the Holy Spirit that at the right time, the right moment, to the right people, to in the right atmosphere, that God will use your past as a testimony to step others into their future. Hallelujah! Oh, I'm feeling this one. I wish they could record it and give it back to me so I could listen to it in the car. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. I preach to myself. Eric, I look at you. I look at others. I look at myself. 
And there are times, Tom, that I find myself driving and all of a sudden I'm in New York and I'm thinking about the first line I took. I'm keeping it real. Sometimes I'm at work and all of a sudden I think of the times that I was dealing, womanizing, strapped, escaping different raids. Sometimes I, I can't help myself but think of the first time that I got incarcerated. Oh, I tell you that I, be, I, I think about these things. I'm keeping it real with you. You know, the, the reality of this ministry is that God said, this is the name, get real. Get real with God, with yourself, and with others. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, yes, yes, I think. Sometimes I catch myself almost, maybe you're different. Sometimes I catch myself daydreaming. It's almost like the song, Return of the Mac. I become Return of the Mac in my mind. But there's something that lies within me. That when I think these thoughts, when I start to daydream, it says in my spirit, release, release, forget. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, release. Look at your neighbor and say, forget. Somebody give God a mighty, mighty hand. Somebody praise the Lord. You see, I may think, I may dwell. Pastor Patrick, I may daydream at times. I catch myself, but I got to slap myself, Pastor Patrick. I got to slap myself like, hey, man, where you going with that? Your beautiful smile. Doctor, I love you so much. Doctor, you're, you're smiling because, and I'm feeling you from here. I feel like you could relate, like you're right there with me. Toby, I got to snap out of it. I know maybe once or twice you go through that too. I got to slap myself. You see how hard I slap myself? It's a real slap. And that's how the Holy Spirit slaps me. He says, release that. Let go of that. Forget that. Because the only one that will use your past as something positive is when the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you, imbued inside of you with power, will say, now's the time to speak it so that others can be released. <laughs> Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. What do you do, Mr. Vega? Forgetting, releasing those things which are behind. And reach forward to those things which are ahead. You and I cannot come out of that daydream. You and I cannot stop that moment of dwelling on what you were doing as if though it were good. When you and I both all, we all know in here that those were miserable times. But Satan will paint your picture like you were having a real good time. You weren't having a good time. The good time only lasts for a little minute. But joy, the joy of the Lord lasts. But come on somebody, the joy of the Lord will last. And it could be eternal forever and ever why the holy spirit's inside of you he says forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward how could you reach forward if you're not filled with the holy spirit how could you reach forward if you have not accepted the salvation the gift of jesus christ how could you move forward if what you speak that is so negative and so condescending to what your Jesus did on the cross, that you will speak that word into something, and it will be something that'll get you tripping. Something that'll—it's—it's it's like setting a a, a a trap. It's a trap set, and God is saying, "Forget, release, speak, put in motion, allow to move forward." 
positive things, good things, godly things, godly relationship. Come on, be a light to this world. Be a light at your job. Wherever you go, Jesus is with you. Don't hide your light under a rock but stand on the rock of salvation the rock of our ages our rock and savior jesus christ would you give god a mighty mighty hand everybody would you give the lord a hand that's why he says finally now that you are able to release how could i pastor i want to release this there's so many things in my life that i want to Forget that I want to release. You could only release them by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you, to overtake you, to pave the way. You got to be persistent to say no to the devil, but yes to God. Would you put your hands together one more time? Would you put your hands together for Jesus? Finally, brothers and sisters, he says, finally. It's almost like the last dance. I'm not talking about Kobe, though. They have a beautiful video of one of the greatest players ever, which is in heaven because he was a believer. Kobe, the video, his life is called the last dance. But I could see the Apostle Paul knowing that his head is coming clean off his shoulders. Tom, Shelby, all of us, not with arrogance, but with grace. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever things are true, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, and if there's anything, meditate on these things. What things? The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Would you give God a mighty hand, everyone? I'm bringing it to a close, you know. There's times when I want to sleep, and I want to sleep good, you know, I got to work the next day. I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe you could relate to this. And for some reason, as tired as I am, Maybe as sleepy as I am. For some reason, if you are watching, that I twist and turn. There's things on my mind. My body's tired. My body wants to sleep. My body's saying, Mr. Vega. Hey, Mr. Vega. You think we can settle down? You could think for one moment that you could turn off the lights. I'm tired. I'm weary. And my mind is racing. And my mind is racing. <clears throat> and it's moments like that that not a sleeping pill. Not any little, what's, what, what's the little thing we give our kids? They're like jelly. Melatonin. Melatonin. Here, a couple of, take a couple of melatonins. Break you off right quick so you could go night-night. You need to go night-night. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to go night-night. And the only thing I could do is start to pray Start to ask Jesus to take over my mind, take over, over my body. I said, Lord Jesus, you know I got to work tomorrow. And Lord Jesus, because of the energy that you gave me, you know I'm like the Energizer Bunny, Jesus. Got more energy than a 20-year-old. 
It's all Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. It's all Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. Put me to sleep. As Pastor Patrick makes his way. Put me night night. I'm tired. My body aches. I'm growing weary. Tonight is the night that if you're anything like me, there's some things that keep coming to your mind. There's some things of your past that you keep dwelling on. There's some things in your past that you may have a daymare about. Things that you may daydream about and you may slap yourself and hey, 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 don't go there. Oh, I don't, oh my God, I only, I only thought that. You know what keeps me clean and sober one day at a time? His name is Jesus, in case you don't know. Hallelujah. But though I may think it, say this with me. Though I may think it, though I may daydream it, I won't give it power. I won't speak it out of my mouth. I'll speak Jesus. I'll speak God help me. God release it from my mind right now. I'm speaking to whoever it is right now that God wants to release something out of your mind. Somebody might say, you're a bad parent. You've never been a good parent. You'll never be a good parent. I'm here to say, somebody may say, you've never been a good person. You've never been a good partner. Whatever it is, somebody might say, you've never been. I'm here to say that God, whatever it is that's keeping you in your past, God wants it to release tonight. God wants to release these thoughts in your mind that keep you tripping. These thoughts that if you speak them will be a trap set from the devil. Father God, that these thoughts, when they come, that not, not only will we release them, but that you'll release your power inside of us and cleanse our mind and our, and our bodies and our heart and our tongues. Purify us that we may give, the Bible says, a good report will speak something positive of what God is doing in our life. Would you put your hands together? Would you please stand up all over the room? Would you stand up? When I say let's give God a hand, don't give him a fake hand, a sorry hand, a tired hand. Let's give God a mighty hand right now, everybody. Give God a mighty hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Patrick. Sunday, 11 o'clock. Pastor Patrick's been doing some phenomenal jobs on Sundays. I love it. I leave here, and I work myself up through the Spirit, and I can't wait to come Sunday. I love each and every one of you. You are so special. Each and every one of you. You are so special in my life. So special. So special. Thank you. Great message, Pastor Willie. I love it. I love Philippians. Philippians is a great book. This one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and pressing on to what's ahead. That's fantastic. Releasing your failures. I like it. I like it. The failures are stepping stones. I took notes, Pastor Willie. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, before we pray, there's, uh, there's a couple people we need to pray for. Um, Sherry's going into surgery Friday. I'm going to pray for her, all right? Um, my father-in-law's name is Bobby. He's going into uh, surgery tomorrow. He's got an aneurysm. There's, a, there's an artery that goes from your heart down and, and branches to your legs. And he's got an aneurysm right around here. That's huge. So they need to go in there and try to fix that. And, uh, and so that's tomorrow as well. Pray for Bobby, okay? Appreciate you guys. 
Uh, Manny, I don't see there's any reason why we can't open up that coffee room since we got food all over the place. <laughs> so, so we'll just open that up again. Why not? All right. Um, just some some changes. Uh, Placer County just uh, voted to open up the entire county against uh, against the governor's wishes. So. So what you're seeing is level-headed people are finally getting their heads out of the clouds and going, hey, what's going on? That's what you're seeing. So praise the Lord for that. <laughs> anyway, let's pray. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your amazing grace. We ask you, Lord, to help us to do what exactly that we learned tonight. Lord, forget those things that are in the past. Forget the failures. Release the failures. Lord, let them be stepping stones to our future. Father, I pray that you just have an amazing uh, hold of over, over our lives and minds and hearts to know what to do and to do right. Lord, I pray for Sherry right now, Lord, that you just touch her body, help her, Lord, to be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for my father-in-law, Bobby, Lord, that you would also heal him in Jesus' name. Lord, that you'd guide the doctors, the nurses, everyone who has a hand in the procedure. Lord, that you would be glorified in all that is said and done. We, Lord, you are the God who heals. Father, I love you t tonight. I pray for Pastor Willie and all of Get Real, that you continue to bless, continue to grow. Thank you, Father, for uh, just uh, uh, people who are realizing what's going on in the world and acting accordingly. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.